Okay, so um, in this uh, Hangout, we were going to chat about um, booking. Um, so that's what we'll uh, focus on for the main body of the, the discussion. Um, but I also just want to, as usual, give a kind of general update on um, some of the work we've been doing at the ODI that's relevant um, to what we're discussing here. Um, and then we might have some time for uh, any other business uh, at the end, if anyone wants to raise any particular issues. Um, so just to begin with on general update, um, we've been continuing to do some development work around the API dashboard, um, which hopefully some of you have uh, had a chance to look at. Um, if you haven't already, it's at status.openactive.io. Um, if you go there now, you can see um, all of the 20 publishers um, who have started to provide open data as part of the program. Um, and uh, some metadata there that indicate whether they are currently uh, conforming to either the paging or the opportunity data model standards. Um, and we've started to enrich that um, since we last spoke with some uh, extra facilities. Um, so now you can see whether the um, feeds include uh, geographic data. So a number of publishers are providing latitude and longitude information for opportunities to help people uh, locate them. Um, so we've, um, because uh, we'd heard from a few people that the availability of that kind of information was a, a key criteria about deciding which feeds to harvest, we've included that in the table now. So you can quickly find those that are um, publishing that information. Um, and we're working out how to provide people with recommendations about how to add this type of data to their feed in ways that are compatible with the open licensing. Um, so we'll probably be sharing something with the community to try and get more, more ticks uh, into that column over the coming months. Um, the other thing that we've been doing is to start to do some summarization of some of the data that's in each of the feeds. Um, a few of the, again, a few, pub, uh, few developers have told us that they really want to get a sense of the coverage of uh, individual feeds in terms of both geography and also the types of activity that they're including. So now <clears throat> for those feeds that uh, conform to the opportunity data model, you can click a link and get a high level summary of the contents of the feed. Um, at the moment, what we're showing is uh, an indication of the types of activities that we've identified in the feed based on how people tagging, are tagging their opportunities and also the geographic spread. Um, so I'll, I, I'll highlight the caveats that we've got uh, on the page there and you can see in the application. Um, which is that we're not in, we're not currently indexing all of the data from all of the feeds. Um, what we're doing is every day um, we're sampling <clears throat> data from the, by harvesting um, a few thousand opportunities um, from each provider, so that over time we can build up a, a picture of um, of what's in there. It may be that in future we switch to indexing all of them, but um, as a kind of first pass. Uh, we just thought we would um, do some sampling, um, which we think you know could give you a, a useful kind of indicative idea about what's in there. Um, it's also already surfacing some uh, useful insight, I think, into um, the types of opportunities that are being um, tagged uh, in, in the feeds. Um, but we'll be able to use this to give some uh, additional breakdown on the kind of coverage and types of um, data that people are publishing. Um, we're at a point where it'd be really good to get some feedback from some from developers. So if anyone on the call here today or watching the video afterwards um, has got any comments, then um, please either leave them on uh, the GitHub uh, project for the dashboard or send us an email at um, the hello at openactive.io address um, because we want to make sure that this is um, uh, meeting people's needs. Um, but we're already finding it useful to help um, uh, encourage publishers to um, start to conform to the, the standards um, and improve what they're doing. <clears throat> so that's kind of general update. Um, any questions or comments on that before I move on? Nope. Okay. Um, right. In that case. Uh, 
one, one on them, um, but we we're going to say uh, that would be good to have a facilities to be provided some versus session data. Uh, we haven't actually got any facility data yet, but if we had that, that might be, I'm assuming that would be useful for folks like Jamie. Yeah, so there's, there's already a, a few issues on the backlog um, that people have reported. So one of them is indication of whether it's events or facilities. And the other one is whether the opportunities are bookable as two kind of high level indicators. So that's there on the backlog, but until we've worked out uh, how to best publish and represent that data, um, it, it'll kind of it'll be part for the moment. Um, but that's something. Quite, that... please, sorry, I did have a question. Mm -hmm. um, sorry if you've already covered this or if it's my non techie brain, but um, is, is this level sort of, of information something that would be available and open to people to use as insight? Um, you mean the summaries um, that you can? So the, the the data that you can see on the page on the screenshot um, is available to download. So mm. the, on the everything that we're showing on the dashboard, uh, you can download it in a machine readable format. It's there under an open license. So if people wanted to to do some further work with it, then they can then, then they're happy to do that. Um, so this is a um, this is a snapshot, but people could go in and they could they could look at, for example, these summaries for everything. Yeah, it, so what um, we're only producing the summaries for those publishers that are supporting both of the standards. Yeah. Um, it, uh, partly because it simplifies the development because it's, we've got a single structure to conform to, but also as a bit of an incentive, um, it'll bring that extra bit of insight for, for doing that work. Um, but yeah, over time, I think it will be a, a useful insight. Um, just, you know, I just reiterate the caveat that I had that it's not a complete representation of everything that would have been discovered from that feed just to sample yeah but i guess like the data is there so if someone wanted to go in and i was just thinking from an insight perspective say say the feed had five hundred thousand um opportunities on it i think like knowing the breakdown of those opportunities and and what what the top activities were and what the geographical breakdowns and that sort of information is is really really useful. Yes, yeah, I agree. Um, we we had uh, Nick. I mean, Nick might know this better, but I think we had at least one potential data user who was interested in that kind of insight and analysis. Um, but we haven't worked out the best way to kind of expose that in a way that you could do analytics around it. Um, at the moment, somebody would need to do the kind of harvesting and in similar way that we are and um, and generate some output. But there might be ways to improve that in the future. Okay. Okay. Oh, so it, 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 that, that would be similar to the sort of data hub model when you're able to look at the, um, you know, the breakdown of, of, of the opportunities and, and et cetera. Just, just a thought, really. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, uh, uh, right on. Go on then, sorry. I was going to say, but you know, hopefully even just uh, showing a very small use of the data like this will help people think through about some ways that it could be used for, you know, for not just for creating apps, but for doing this kind of um, analytics as well. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, on, on your point about the other the data use case, um, it was been a, there's been a request to um, see if we can export the data we've got as CSV. I think that's probably somewhere in the backlog of things that are, are good to do if enough people want it to happen. But um, just a kind of a translator to get from harvesting to CSV was was the request. So you could do spreadsheet analytics on that one. Um, but that was the other, I don't, if anyone wants that to happen, so you know that I mean that's something that could be prioritized, I would imagine, uh, by someone that wants to do the work. There we go, that's very ambiguous, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Um, it, it might also be worth noting that in the process of, of building this, you know, we're building a, um, a software library that other people could use to create additional um, additional applications or analyses and we're going to be using it uh, in some of the tutorials and developer documentation that we're producing as a team as well. Um, okay, i am probably move us on to the next section. Um, so this is booking. Um, so really I just want to give a kind of update on um, what we've been doing at the ODI over the past couple of weeks. Um, 
uh, just present a summary of, uh, of that um, and what we think the next steps are. Um, what I'll be going through here on the slides, um, there is a, there's a document that um, Sally, who's uh, been on previous call, has written. Um, she, unfortunately, she couldn't be here today, so I'm going to kind of uh, do my best to um, present the summary of her work. Um, but the, uh, there'll be links, there's links in the slides which I'll circulate afterwards, um, which take you through to uh, her short, um, short report, so you can uh, explore it in more detail. Um, <clears throat> So uh, where we're at at the moment, um, we've been having uh, a lot of conversations across the team, um, uh, both here in these calls, but also individually with uh, some of the people we've been engaging with around the uh, uh, program, around the importance of booking. Um, so it's, it's very clear to us that um, progress around booking is uh, really important for uh, some aspects of the, the community and the data ecosystem we're building around Open Active. Um, so the, as I say, the research that Sally has been doing is, is in a document which I've, um, I've made open and will circulate after the call um, that uh, summarizes what, what we've heard so far and what we've uncovered with some of the desk research. Um, <clears throat> so to begin with, what we've been doing is looking at those APIs um, that already exist uh, within uh, the physical activity sector, so implemented by existing platforms like um, Legend and Gladstone. Um, but we've also been looking uh, more broadly at um, other platforms and APIs that offer more generic um, booking services or um, are kind of tailored around, um, you know, kind of like the Eventbrite, uh, specialized around booking um, this particular types of event. Um, what we've been trying to do there is to draw out some of the um, common elements uh, uh, of the, those different APIs and also identify some of the kind of different design decisions that people are making around building that type of interface. Um, so there's, a, there's a, a number of things that have come out from that in terms of um, formats of the API. Um, there's a few, there's a couple in the physical activity se sector that are using um, uh, what I would consider to be kind of older SOAP style interfaces rather than a more kind of modern RESTful approach to building APIs. Mixture of different um, data formats in use, um, differences in approach to authentication, not just in how people, um, how developers authenticate in order to use the API services, but also in how those APIs are authenticating uh, members and users who may be registered with those platforms. Uh, it's quite a scope in terms of functionality um, and in terms of some of the qu uh, quality of service offerings across the APIs, uh, you know, whether they are free or paid for services, um, level of rate limiting, and, and really the level of developer support that is provided to get um, third parties on, um, on boarded. Um, I think it's wouldn't be entirely unfair for me to say that um, uh, some of the existing platforms have pretty poor documentation and developer experience at the moment. Um, uh, quite often you need to sign an NDA or you know, come to an agreement before you can even see uh, the documentation, um, which makes it hard to do any kind of um, proof of concept work uh, without, you know, uh, without engaging in some kind of formal relationship with those platforms. Um, not everyone is offering sandboxes, for example, to make it easier to test services and the documentation is quite varied as well. Um, there's often quite a lot of uh, internal knowledge required around some of the um, some of the platforms in order to actually um, do anything successfully with the APIs. Um, so there's quite um, it's quite a lot we could be doing around just kind of recommending better approaches to exposing these type of APIs within the sector. Um, we are happy to look at other examples. Um, so I wanted to kind of um, just put that request out there that if um, you are offering or using APIs that support booking at the moment, then we would really like to be able to see um, what public documentation you're, you're happy to share um, so that we can do more of this kind of comparison between services. Um, 
a key thing around building any kind of technical standard like this is being able to build on people's existing work. Um, so the more um, we can get shared from the community, the more likely we are going to have, uh, to, more success we're going to have around building something that will work for a variety of different use cases. Um, Lee, I um, uh, shared my documentation or the documentation we put together um, uh, just, I think, before the summer. So I'd be really happy to send that around again um, so people can have a look. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, it's possible that Sally didn't see that. Um, so I, I, I'll ask her to take a look. Um, but yeah, uh, that'd be fantastic. Um, as well as kind of identifying some of the kind of doing some of those comparisons te uh, on the technology side of things, we've been trying to tease out um, some of the requirements that people have on both the publishing and the consumption side, uh, where we think there may be some blockers and where the areas of complexity are um, in the physical activity sector. Um, so there's, there's a few things that we can share in the slides now, um, but uh, what I'm keen to do is get some more detailed use cases and requirements from people. Um, so I've got a link further, further on in the presentation to a survey um, that would be really helpful to get people to fill out. Um, it's written from the point of view of uh, uh, developers who'd be using APIs, but I plan to do the same thing for um, platform providers as well. Um, I'll share a link to that in a moment. <clears throat> Um, but in terms of uh, requirements, um, quite different. We're getting quite different feedback from different uh, different sides of the community. So on the kind of data user side, um, the, uh, there's a clear voice in the community that um, integrated booking is a absolute must-have. It's a key requirement, uh, and for many, their interest in open active is kind of gated on the provision of this kind of uh, facility. Um, that you know, the booking is really the thing that they want to start with rather than um, opportunity discovery. Um, there are some uh, users who uh, are, for which booking is important, but they don't necessarily want to offer the full booking experience and that handing off to a uh, suitable uh, workflow that would help convert people from that kind of discovery of opportunities to participation would be helpful, but they don't necessarily need a fully fledged API that would cover, you know, full pricing, payment, and you know, cancellation. Um, and we've also hear that there are users who who aren't interested in booking at all, uh, and that they're really just interested in building activity finders. Um, and so this isn't a kind of strong requirement for them. Uh, on the publisher side, things are very mixed, and I think this reflects the fact that you know there's a kind of very mixed approach to offering uh, booking APIs in, in the sector at the moment. Um, some publishers are holding opportunity data which isn't bookable just by its nature. Um, so walking routes, outside gyms, um, walking trails, all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, you know we kind of need to note and be aware of that uh, and just be clear that uh, with data users that not everything will always be bookable. Um, but we need to nevertheless be encouraging uh, data users to be uh, using that opportunity data and making it visible to potential participants uh, to make sure people are seeing the breadth of um, opportunities that are available to them. Um, I think quite um, a mixed outlook in terms of platforms, in terms of uh, how much they are kind of bought into offering a uh, complete third party booking experience. Um, so whether they want to retain some ownership of the, um, of that kind of experience and that kind of interaction with the, with the users or whether they're happy for it to be um, completely done on somebody else's application or, or platform. Um, and I think that, that, that kind of is reflected in the level of investment that some publishers made around APIs. Um, we're hearing that some publishers are very happy to provide booking APIs, but before they do anything, they want some guidance from us as a program uh, in order to, to kind of get a better sense of what, um, what the community needs. So there is a kind of definite need there um, to help um, you know, uh, open up more of these services. Um, but also that the, this this kind of work from a platform point of view needs to be slotted into existing roadmaps. Um, 
you know, that there's a, there's a whole variety of customer needs that they're meeting. And so we need to be very clear with them about uh, when and where they can engage with um, both helping us move forward the standardization of, of, uh, of any booking APIs, but also when it will be ready for them to implement. So it's, a, it's quite a, a mixed economy, I think, at the moment. Um, in terms of kind of general feature requirements that have come up, um, so clearly uh, needs for, for booking both uh, events and facilities. So people are interested in classes, courses, sports hall, pitches, table tennis tables, uh, and need for ticketing. Um, in order to support a proper third party booking experience, you need to be able to create, update, and cancel bookings. Um, so where some of the plex complexity comes in is around where, how you're handling, how people handle um, uh, booking of individual opportunities or uh, multiple sessions. So whether some, somebody's signing up for a kind of a full schedule of events, um, where their bookings are for individual people, um, and potentially quite a lot of complexity around the kind of business models in terms of revenue share for, around um, how booking is made sustainable. I don't feel like that is something that we should be kind of making a recommendation on within this group and it's not something that we would necessarily standardize but it's just something that we need to be mindful of when it comes to any uh, technical recommendations uh, that there may need still need to be some negotiation between platforms and um, developers in terms of using uh, with using and how they use you know, the booking apis or um, what kind of extra information that may need to be passed between them in order to support a variety of different business models. Um, and so Sally sketched out a few areas of complexity that are likely to kind of impact the, the design. Um, so I'll just kind of briefly run through. So uh, whether um, APIs are supporting um, bookings from kind of new or casual users or from members, um, the different types of booking, so whether you're booking a facility or an event, um, group-based bookings, there's complexity that we've discussed on some of our previous calls around um, uh, time. Um, so uh, an event may be scheduled in advance, but you may only be able to book it uh, 24 or 48 hours um, before it begins. So there's, there's some implications there in terms of um, how and when um, uh, data users can kind of trigger booking processes, um, which might also impact the way that we are uh, surfacing some of the opportunity data. Uh, obviously, it can be a lot of complexity around how payments are processed. There's lots of different ways that people want to pay for things these days. Um, so the process of doing that um, and where the, the handoff is between the user um, the whatever intermediary is doing the kind of orchestrating the booking process, the platform and potentially the merchant, the kind of whoever it is that's taking the payment. Um, cancellations, security, testing, I've mentioned sandboxes. So, you know, really um, uh, anyone who's offering an API needs to have a sandbox that allows somebody to test it um, in their application before moving into a, a production setting. So that's got some implications in terms of how people um, uh, surface some of their infrastructure for third parties to use. Um, and also complexity around um, uh, the kind of user handoff between the different services. Um, so who, who is it that a user is directly engaging with um, if they've received follow up emails um, with tickets uh, or stuff in the post, then uh, who's it coming from, you know, how do they connect that to the application or service that they were using, particularly if they have to go to one of the main platform or the application in order to do uh, changes or cancellations around their booking. Um, so uh, quite a lot to, to dig into. Um, there's some in Sally's documents, uh, she's put uh, some initial uh, quite high level recommendations around um, what we think um, platforms need to think about. Um, we've also um, been working on a document that spells out for platforms what it means to support Open Active in terms of um, adding features. So what, what are the technical implications? 
Um, that's something that has been shared with a couple of the larger platforms already, um, but I'm hoping to get that kind of published more broadly so people have got a, a better idea about um, what it means to be involved from that, um, from that kind of publisher platform point of view. Um, so while we've surfaced quite a lot of complexity here, um, we need to start to find some way to prioritize um, work in various areas. So I've put together a survey. There's a bit.ly link that hopefully you can see on the screen there. Um, I'll send the link around afterwards, um, which will help us start to collect some use cases. So within the survey, um, it asks, um, uh, asking developers to provide a bit of information about their application. So what is it that they're building? Um, give an example uh, user story that reflects a typical booking workflow in the application to help us start to share um, those, those different approaches uh, across the community. And also some structured questions um, to help us work out um, some of the prioritization around booking different types of you know, events and facilities, um, members, non-members, um, the types of uh, integration that people want to do um, with uh, platforms, whether they're looking to integrate with specific uh, platforms or anyone that is publishing open active data. Um, so uh, yeah, I'd encourage uh, anyone who's building applications that, that would benefit from booking APIs to fill this in. Um, we'll be circulating it not just on the mailing list, but through our usual channels as well, so that we can get um, a good sense of requirements across the community. Um, so um, in terms of uh, next steps, um, there are um, a few ways that um, people can start to uh, feed in to our plans. So I've already mentioned um, that if you have uh, API documentation that would be useful for us to look at, then, then please share it. Um, you can provide uh, comments on the, document, on the document that Sally has put together um, to give us feedback on some of our findings and recommendations. You can fill in the survey to help us collect um, a bit more information, but structured information. Um, and we're also hoping to run a, well, not hoping, we will be running a workshop in January um, to focus in a bit more on uh, some of these requirements in more detail. Um, so we'll be sending around a doodle poll, um, it should be by the end of this week, um, to organize something, um, probably at the ODI offices in mid to, probably mid to late January. Um, what I'm hoping to do is to keep the survey running through uh, until mid January, so that when we work, um, come to the workshop, um, we've got some kind of clear requirements that we can start to um, dig into in terms of um, prioritization, um, uh, looking at some of the kind of uh, technical aspects of the, um, of the roadmap. So if you are interested in attending that, then I keep an eye out from an email uh, from me uh, this week, or Claire, like me or Claire, or you can just drop us an email at hello at openactive.io and just let us know uh, if you're if you're interested in coming along and we'll make sure that you're on the invite um, so that's where we're at in terms of our work so um, i'll i'll shut up now and let you um give um uh, give me a bit of feedback or and share your comments or thoughts um, anyone want to jump in uh just from my side um i wonder um in, in creating this uh, this framework, what buy-in have we got from any of the uh, other operators? I know, for example, Les on this call from Birkenberg, they've got very good API documentation uh, at the moment. Um, from some of the ones that uh, have not got such good documentation, uh, have you spoken with them about them aligning their APIs uh, to the specification we're trying to write here. Nick, do you want to jump in there? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, so we're currently working with some of the bigger organizations. Uh, so that's XM, uh, Legend, Cloudstone um, on this. Um, the, uh, at different rates, um, I think Legend should be on the next call, actually. Um, and we're hoping to get some similar engagement from the others. Um, but 
the it, this all kind of starts from the customers of those platforms and what we understand is that there's interest from those customers we've certainly seen it with legend Inverso, um and um xcent to an extent um so the customers asking for this to be prioritized as a requirement um is something that the the big systems have said if the customers ask for it then this is something that we'll do so working with those customers to just um, to see if that's something that they're interested in doing and so far the answer seems to be yes and they're, they're pushing for it so um, as much as we can facilitate those conversations and help people understand the benefits and, and see if that's something they want to see happen and, and, and why so so the answer is yeah it would be great if they were all in this I think Raymond is very much engaged he's charity live um, and so that they are certainly um, on, on top of this and I know that they are although they're the fourth of the, of the the other three I just mentioned, um, I think they certainly will be adopting all of the, the recommendations as soon as we can get them to do that. Um, and then obviously there's the the rest of the systems, including Booking by Book when um, many others um, who are just as important. Um, and hopefully, although we haven't spent as much time with those, um, there's a there's a benefit in in joining in with this as this progresses. So any thoughts on how we make this more accessible or, or encourage people to, to do that would be great. Yeah, so uh, uh, just to, to add to that, um, I think um, you know, so there, there, there are quite a few people in the community who are really keen to get a better sense of that kind of overall roadmap of when, you know, when major platforms are going to be supporting booking. Um, but in order to kind of do that, we need several things. We need them to be clear about what their individual roadmaps are and where adding support for um, elements of, of open active will fit into that um, and in order for them to do that they needed a clearer statement from us as a program about what we were going to be asking them to do um, so that was the kind of the document that I, I mentioned just now where we've we've laid out in quite clear way um, what the high level requirements are um, but in order to get more detail around booking we need to kind of surface more of the requirements for the community around what's, you know, what's the most important thing that they can do immediately that will address as many people's needs as possible. Um, so that's why I've kind of focused on um, this survey for, uh, for, for data users, because we can turn that into a set of, of requirements that, um, that the platforms can, can start to work on. Um, and it may be that there are some short term improvements that they could be doing to existing APIs and services that will just help, uh, uh, you know, meet people's needs in the short term, uh, you know, ahead of doing any kind of alignment around a common API. Okay, thanks. And um, I see uh, a selfish question, this one, but I see from the, um, uh, the Open Active site that all of the um, items there are sessions. So I wonder what the expectation is for facilities to start being added um, to that. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a great question. Um, be, I'm gonna just skip on. So on our next call in, in, in January, I wanted to focus on facilities specifically. Um, so we, we touched on it briefly, uh, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, so I think we kind of need to, you know, spend a bit more focused time on it. So on our next call, if, if we go into that in more detail, and I think that will give me a bit of time to um, look at some of the, the samples that, that you've sent and others have sent um, and kind of understand what the kind of the, the fit is between what we've got in the current model uh, and what we might need to add. So we've got a kind of structured way to move forward. Um, also, if people are really, if, if booking facilities is more important than booking events, then obviously we need to, to have nailed that first. And on that, actually, on facilities, um, we've got school hire, uh, booking bug, um, uh, sports uh, with the Z, and um, one other booking system, um, Vladstone, um, then uh, via Fusion, or potentially interested in publishing uh, or facilitating that work from what I understand in the last um, few weeks of conversation so that's for potential publishers of facility data um, if anyone has any more that I haven't just talked about that I would be good to add to that list and bring into the conversation um, then please do um, send an email to hello at or um, mention here or uh, whichever 
be really great to make sure when we have the facilities conversation, we have as many booking systems as uh, as possible engaged in, in that, and people understand the data and what it needs to look like. Because there's, there's some complexities around it, which everyone seems to be solving in slightly different ways, which is great. So, uh, yeah. Um, just on that, uh, you mentioned booking bug, um, uh, and obviously, as I said, Les is on the call. Um, what facilities would they be providing based on them being a software provider, not necessarily an inventory manager? So I think from our perspective, the the interest in Open Active is really to, um, I guess, broaden our opportunity for uh, booking providers in terms of you know, we have customers that want open active integration and therefore, you know, we need to conform to those, uh, those uh, the, the relevant APIs in terms of providing that um, integration. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does, thank you. I had another point that might be worth um, uh, talking about or at least engaging with the other people about is the payment side. Um, uh, as you've highlighted, that's going to be a very crucial element to this. Um, what can make it difficult is the payment processes um, don't like a don't like to lose control as such of the uh, process or the APIs. So. To name an example, world pay can be quite difficult when um, discussing third party API integrations uh, with sending payment from one business to another. And I rather wonder whether they would be worth engaging on this to see if there can be um, uh, any work on their side to help, help make it a bit more accessible. Uh, because otherwise, what can happen is. Um, you get quite far in the development of uh, API integration uh, and then the payment side is a bit that lets you down because um, the process won't actually allow you to integrate with them. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I, I had assumed that the, the kind of payment process, so, so which is, I, th I think the, the category that WorldPay would be in would be kind of hidden behind whatever API the platform's providing rather than you having to integrate with WorldPay as well as the vendor. Am I misunderstanding what the, the issue? Uh, I think it, it so, um, and you, there is one option where you can publish a WorldPay, um, uh, well, pay payment gateway, uh, payment window, um, uh, uh, widget, sorry, in the site. But if that can not be ideal in the sense that uh, you lose control over the, um, uh, the design and the implementation and responsiveness, etc. Um, and so uh, if you want to just integrate with WellPay's API instead of just publishing their widget, uh, they can make that very difficult. Uh, it's not completely impossible, um, but it takes an awful lot of persuading and you've got to get through to the right person, uh, which are big uh, kind of uh, payment gateways can be difficult. So um, on a kind of strategic level, it might be worth just getting them into the conversations to explain what uh, we're trying to do as a group and see what they can do um, in terms of making uh, APIs, payment APIs more accessible. Yeah, and, and, and I can add uh, some colors to that in terms of, um, I'm not sure if this is in Sally's document, but there's, there's two ways of doing payment. There's um, treating the booking system as an isolated system that you just say, I've booked it, trust me, there's five pounds being paid. And then a separate system for payment, uh, exactly like Jamie's saying, where you then do the payment. And so the way you, you do that is you lease the, lease the slot and then you go and take the payment at five pounds. Then you say that's confirmed um, and you make separate API calls to those two different systems alternately and totally independently. There's no links between the two systems. It's just one way of taking payment and one is doing booking. Um, and then there's another approach, which is um, in use in some systems 
um, which is all as one where you have to bounce to an iframe or something and the payment processor does it and then it gives you the link back. Um, I think generally speaking from the data user conversations we've had, the, the latter is not preferred because it limits the use cases. So Apple Watch, uh, Apple Pay, saving credit card details for users under their accounts so you can easily pay seamlessly and against each provider. All those things stop being possible if you have to bounce people to different iframes depending on what provider they happen to interact with. Um, and so um, the preference seems to be to have this kind of two, uh, you know, operate, talk to the payment people, talk to the booking system. And I think our, to, all the discussions here have been very much focused on the booking system APIs and what they provide. Um, and I, I, I totally understand Jamie's point on the payment is, is a mess. Stripe do it very well. A lot of others do it very badly. Um, and so there, there might be an opportunity here to I improve that. Is that, is that accurate to what you're saying, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so maybe that's like for kind of engagement and um, as we start to dig into that kind of that requirement, whether you want to get some of those people on board or not. Yeah. There's a scoping question and a priority question as well, I suppose, because obviously payments is a whole sector in itself. And so how, how much we want to uh, bring that in and when. Yeah, definitely. Um, so has anyone got any f other feedback on things that you don't think we've, um, we've thought about yet, you know, in terms of areas of complexity or blockers um, or requirements that we, we haven't yet started to surface? Uh, it's uh, Andy. Oh, sorry, uh, it's Andy Sloper from Active Devon. Um, the the only area, uh, um, and I'm only flagging this up as I think it's one to bear in mind for the future, rather than uh, any of the general thrust of the conversation that's happened so far, because that's clearly the uh, you know the priority areas. Um, is the link between what we're talking about doing here and opportunities in the future around issues like social prescribing, where um, there are two aspects that I've sort of spotted and I'll respond through the uh, use cases and others for this. But um, one is around when a booking is made, the, there may some be some sort of authorization or acknowledgement of the booking being accepted being required um, in terms of the eligibility of that, that opportunity for the the person if it's in a sort of clinical setting or context. Um, the other thing is, is on the payment side in terms of actually if it's if there is uh, any sort of revenue attached to the social prescribing actually that may be a, a, a completely different uh, mechanism than an actual cash payment um, in, in the sort of straightforward sense that, that actually it would maybe a some sort of voucher ticketing or some other thing coming via a, a health provider or otherwise. Um, that's only really, as I say, to sort of flag those up as things to be borne in mind for the future in terms of how things are structured rather than something that needs to be a priority at this stage, but certainly something to bear in mind. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and, and to flag that, we've, we have heard vouchers and credit being, uh, being articulated as booking requirements from. Um, some of the larger operators. So I think the, <coughs> the voucher thing is, it's a few people have said it, but I don't know if it's been registered. So that's a really good, it's a really good one to pick up. Uh, any, any other comments or feedback at this point? If not, then I'll just, um, uh, just briefly can sum up and keep us to time. Uh, so I, I've um, scheduled uh, the next three months, no, next 12, um, next 12 calls. I sent um, an invite round to the mailing list earlier. Um, I thought that might be an easy way for people to get the calls into their diaries, um, but there is still the shared calendar as well, which I'll continue to update. Um, so the first call in the new year will be on 17th January and we'll focus on facilities as we were just discussing. Um, then at the end of January, we'll do another um, roundup around booking. Um, that doesn't mean that we won't be looking at booking until uh, before then because uh, I want to have um, closed down the survey and hopefully I've run the booking workshop 
uh, uh, before then, in the diaries willing, um, so that in that session we can use it as a way to um, validate um, some of the things that we've learned from both the survey and the workshop participants with people who can't be there. So I, I want to make sure that we're keeping this as open as possible so that people who can't actually make it uh, on the day will still have an opportunity to get their requirements and views added into the plans. Um, and then uh, I sort of tentatively su suggested that we should return to the activity list and as a focus for the call in February. Uh, but again, um, there's going to be some work happening uh, before that, particularly around doing some more um, tool, tool evaluation to help us um, move forward some of the kind of data management aspects of that. Um, so, yeah, so that's where we are for the moment. Um, unless there are any other comments that people want to briefly make at the end of the call, then I think I will wrap this up. No. Nope. Okay. Then, okay. Thank you all for giving up uh, some more of your time. Um, we find these really useful ways to validate what we're doing with the, with the community. So um, hopefully see you all in the new year and expect a few emails from me uh, just after this call. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you.